Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have a fairly newly released product from our friends at Nuelec. This little Raspberry Pi hat is called the Flycatcher and it contains two onboard SDR receivers. Each receiver has their own low noise preamplifier and high quality saw filters in line between the antenna connections. Now this helps filter out any strong signals that are close to the desired frequency and amplifies those weak signals. However, you do not have to use the LNA if your antenna already has one installed, a bit like mine does, but more on that later. One side is dedicated to receiving ADS-B signals at 1090 megahertz, and the other side is dedicated to receiving UAT signals at 978 megahertz. A UAT signals at 978 megahertz is not available in the UK, mainly it's only supported in the US. So in this video, I'll not be showing that part of the Pi hat. However, it's exactly the same as the ADS-B side. Now those two blue push buttons that you can see on the board enable or disable the inbuilt LNA. One is for UAT and the other is ADS-B. You'll also notice there are two USB ports on the opposite end of the board to the SMA antenna connections. Well, these are for powering the Pi hat and communicating with the onboard SDR receivers. The 40 pin header is simply a pass through. The flycatcher does not take any power or data via that 40 pin header. Now, just so you can visualize what the flycatcher actually does, and here's a simplified schematic taken from the specification sheet. Now, going from left to right, we can see the antenna input, which then goes through that RF switch. Now, this switch enables LNA or disables it, and that's the one with the blue push part that we saw on the board a moment ago. The signal then goes through a filter, either 978 MHz or 1090 MHz filter, depending on which one you're using. Then after this, the signal goes into the R860 RF tuner, and then it goes off to the RTL 2832 ADC. Now both tuners and ADCs are connected to a 28.8 MHz local oscillator. Now the ADCs then go off to their relevant USB ports for connecting to the Pi. Okay, so let's hook this up and get it working. Firstly, you will need to attach this little header extender so that the flycatcher board is slightly raised so we can actually access those USB ports. Now in your kit, you'll most likely have metal standoffs, but I'm using some plastic ones that I already have here. Now these just provide support to the side of that flycatcher board that's not connected to the Pi. It just kind of stops it wiggling around. As well as providing enough clearance for the USB connections, this also provides more space for cooling. As if you're going to run this 24 seven, then you'll want to try and keep both the Pi and the flycatcher as cool as possible. In fact, I'll show you a way of monitoring the Pi temperature later in the video. As I will only be using ADS-B due to UAT not being supported in the UK, I'll connect a small USB cable between one of the Pi's USB ports and the ADSB USB connector on the flycatcher. Now this provides power and a data connection just for that ADSB side. Now when it comes to software, there's quite a few different packages available that will run on Pi OS. But let me show you one of the most easiest setups that's currently available. The first thing you'll want to do is to write a Pi operating system to an SD card. Now for simplicity, I just use the Raspberry Pi imager which is available online. For this installation, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B and I'll choose the Pi OS 64-bit version. Now, before you write to the card, it might be an idea to edit the custom settings and set things like Wi-Fi connection and also an SSH username and password so that when the Pi is powered up, it just auto connects to your network. With the SD card image, pop it into your Pi and connect an antenna and then power it on. Now here's my setup and here I'm using a JetVision Bias T after the antenna connection. And that's because my ADS-B antenna, which is up on my mast, requires power. It has a filter and LNA already built into the antenna, which is why it needs power. Now, although this antenna works extremely well, I don't really have it installed in an ideal location. Being so close to this pole makes it a little deaf towards the west, but it performs extremely well for my needs and the rare times that I need to do some ADS-B testing. 
Now I'll leave a link in the description to this GitHub page, but here we have just two commands to get the system working. The first is a script which downloads and installs the software, and the second command is just to reboot the Pi. So first you'll need to SSH into the Pi using a free application like Putty. And once you have a terminal window open, you can now copy and paste this command and then just press enter. Just sit back as this install will take a few minutes and the screen will scroll up with lots of information as it installs all the components needed. Now once it's finished installing, simply enter the sudo reboot into the terminal window and the Pi will reboot itself. Once rebooted, you can go onto any computer's browser that's on the same network as the Pi, type the IP address of the Pi with forward slash tar1090 at the end. You'll then be presented with this cool looking map. And if all is working, you should start to see aircraft appear on the map. However, the map most likely will not be centered over your location, but we'll fix that in a moment. Just to make sure that you are actually receiving aircraft, move the map over to your own location. You should see aircraft flying overhead that the flycatcher can see. As usual, you can click on an aircraft to see further information, and most of them actually have photos of the actual aircraft, which you can click on that to view full screen. Now I won't go over all the features of the software as this video is more about setting up the flycatcher, but let's just fix the home location setting. To do this, log back into the Pi using SSH, and you'll need to enter this command with your own latitude and longitude details. So that's sudo read sb set location, then your latitude, then your longitude, and press enter. You'll also need to reboot the Pi using sudo reboot now so that the new home location is set. Now, when you reopen your browser to the same IP address as before to show the map, you'll now notice that it's centered over your home location, or at least the latitude and longitude that you set with that previous command. And one final piece of software you can install is called Graphs 1090, and this will provide you with historical performance graphs. And we'll take a look at them in a moment, but to install them, you simply SSH into your Pi and then copy this single line from Graphs 1090 GitHub page. This will then install all the required files required to implement this historical performance graph. Once installed, I did make one change to the config file, and this was to change the theme to dark mode. I think it's a lot easier on the eyes compared to the light version, but at least you have a choice. Now once installed, you can view the graph by typing your Pi's IP address into a web browser, followed by forward slash graphs 1090. Now data will take around 10 minutes to appear from a fresh install, but over time, these reports will build. This is quite useful as it shows in a nice, easy to read format the performance of your installation. Showing ADSB message rates, signal levels, ADSB ranges, and the list goes on. Also, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see some stats relating specifically to the Raspberry Pi that you're using. So it's great to monitor for temperature, disk space, and even CPU usage. So there we go, guys. That's the Flycatcher Pi Hat Board from Nuelec, an easy way to adding an ADSB or UAT receiver to a Raspberry Pi. Now, I know there's lots of devices on the market that you can use to do the same thing. Now, whether they're cheaper or more expensive is highly irrelevant. This gives us a choice of using it in this particular way. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.